Hi there, this is Michael. This is my PIDP 4150 Challenges and Opportunities of E-Learning. Assignment 2, my instructor, Joanne Brown. What are the instructor-based challenges? What are the learner-based challenges? So with E-Learning, the key issues seem to be adaptability struggles. This is not a traditional classroom environment. This is an online environment. It's different. There are technical issues, such as slow internet, unfamiliar computer programs, in some cases, even unfamiliar computers. There are computer literacy issues. For the instructors, knowing the learning management system, how to operate it, how to manage it, and also, generally, what are your online proficiency skills? Time management for students especially, elimination of distractions and making the commitment to be self-determined. Um, this ties in with students' self-motivation, discipline, and um, self-awareness. Understanding the course expectations. So this is where students need to know what's due, what the time requirements are, the time commitment, and how to manage that. Also, because of the lack of in-person interactions, um, there is the risk of becoming the isolated learner where you hunker down and basically take these things on all on your own. So what can instructors do to manage the challenges of e-learning? What can the learners do? In education, the digital divide is more about using the resources appropriately versus getting the resources. Most people have a laptop, most people have a tablet or a, even a smartphone. Um, the quality learning outcomes and the successful use of technology hinge on the amount of experience and the comfort level of the instructor and the learner. Um, instructors are required to support and facilitate social interactions and these relationship development. Also to provide students with experience that challenges their higher order cognitive skills. Learners need to be self-directed, self-determined, and self-aware. What are some of the advantages e-learning has over face-to-face -face learning? Well, for starters, e-learning is very flexible. Learners can study in the space where they feel most comfortable. In most cases, they are self-paced. If a learner doesn't grasp a concept, they can go over it many, many times until they do. Or if they're really stuck, they can go in the class bulletin board, post questions, get answers, have discussions, and um, interact with other students. Learners really have complete control over the amount of time they spend learning. Also, learning occurs anytime, any place, and anywhere the learner chooses. What are some of the best practices for teaching online? Well, instructors need to be present in the course. They need to be more than just a hand on the overhead and a voice in the background. Instructors need to create a supportive online community, such as discussion posts, online bulletin boards, etc. They need to develop explicit student expectations so that students understand what's required of them and what the time commitments will be. They should use a variety of groups, large and small, and they should try to, where possible, use synchronous and asynchronous activities. I think synchronous activities is a little more challenging with an online environment because synchronous activities take away from the flexibility as they have to get everybody together at the same place at the same time online. Um, it's important for instructors to get feedback early and that way they can to determine what needs to be done to modify or, or support specific learners if they're having challenges. And one of my personal kind of sticklers is good audio and good video, well lit. Um, I find these really important, especially audio. You can put up with slightly less than perfect video, but the audio absolutely needs to be great. Um, some additional best, best practices. Um, instructors need to assess as they go by gathering evidence. 
And through formative assessment, teachers can check students' understanding, get valuable data on student learning, and then use that data to modify as required. Um, they should also use a content frame for the course. A content frame is a visual representation of the content of a reading selection, an outline. Um, this strategy teaches students to look for obvious visual clues to the course organization, such as heading, subheading, introductions, summary, and topic sentences. Um, design experiences that help learners make progress. This includes understanding the learner's hierarchy of needs. And these are, what is the program? What features are to be covered? Is this program functional? Is this program reliable? Is this program useful? And primarily, is it convenient? I think, is it convenient is a prime motivator as to um, why students choose online. Um, and finally, you want to have good course closing and wrap activity. Um, some key points are to remind students what things they should retain from each model. And this can also connect the learning with the next module or course and illustrate how these key concepts will be built on in the, um, in the following, you know, the next module of the course, the next course itself. This also helps students who may be struggling to review the essentials and allow them to self-direct and review what they need to. Here are my references. If you need more information, here are the references. Um, I will post the complete text of what I've said in a, um, another additional um, blog entry on my blog. So just for your information, this was recorded using a Blue Yeti microphone and um, captured on my Logitech webcam. And this session is recorded using screens, Castomatic, and posted on YouTube. So that's it. Thank you.